And we thank you and we praise you, God, for what you're getting ready to do. Break up the fallow ground, God. We want this revival to permeate through the city of Oakland, God. Change the paradigms that are here. We decree and declare that we come against principalities and powers and wickedness in high places and declare, God, that we're kingdom kids. So we give you glory and we give you praise. And we be so careful to give your name the praise. It's in Jesus' name that our God's people have their hands together. Come on. The music department is coming at this time. Praise the Lord, everybody. We come to magnify the Lord tonight. Is that right? Want anybody come to lift him up tonight? Hallelujah. I didn't drive in traffic just to come and look at you, but I came to give God glory. Is that right? He's worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of all the glory. And he's worthy of all the honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise and worship, so if you're able to stand to your feet, if you want to stand up and clap your hands and sing with us, you're grown, I'm not going to force you, but if you want to stand up, amen, God is worthy, he's been good to all of us, hallelujah, so we will, this is corporate worship, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah.
up your worship right there. Hallelujah. Come on, open up your mouth and worship him. Come on, I don't hear you. Come on, worship your king. Worship your savior. Hallelujah. Come on, one more time. Jesus.
the mention at the mention of your to open your mouth and give them glory. Come on, I dare you to open your mouth right there and give them glory. Come on, this is revival. Come on, this is revival. He said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Come on, and open your mouth and praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and put those hands together. Beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed. members in one body, but all of the members 
do not have the same function. So we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them in prophecy. Let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Or ministry, let us use it in our own ministry. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. For your consideration, I read through to you the first nine verses of the 12th chapter of Romans. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the doing of his word. Amen. Shall we pray? Father God, we thank you. The phrase thank you is not enough to express how grateful we are. We thank you that you have allowed us another opportunity and another chance to gather together in your house. We are grateful that you are God and God alone. And we realize that it, without you, we can do nothing. We are your creation, and you are the creator. You are our redeemer, our healer, our strength. You are the source of everything that we need and desire. We acknowledge you as God and our Savior. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us to go through this day. Thank you, Lord, for letting us gather together in this place. Lord, you know what we have need of even before we ask. We pray in the name of Jesus that your will will be done this night, Lord. Every heart, every believer, even those that are non-believers that would be under the sound of my voice, God, we pray that your spirit would move over us, Lord. Bless us. Deliver us. Heal us. Lift up our heavy burden. God, you know all about it. We ask that you have your way, Lord. Bless the furtherance of this service, Lord, as the choir sings, as the word of God is preached, Lord. Let it have an effect on us that would cause us to do better that will cause us to be stronger, that will give us just enough strength to go on a little further. We give you glory, honor, and praise. Bless the angel of this house. Bless this Baptist minister's union, oh God. Let this week be epic, but most of all, God, you get the glory. You get the glory. You get the glory. In all that we do, God, get the glory. Everything that we say, God, you get the glory. We will praise you. We will glorify you. We will magnify you. We're not going to squander this opportunity, but we're going to lift your name. God, because you're worthy of all the praise. Hallelujah. All the glory and honor belongs to you. We bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. If you believe that, put your hands together and say amen. God's people said amen.
Can you say amen again? Yeah. We're just kind of filling in because people walking in and y'all look like some of y'all look like y'all just got off work. <laughs> Breathe, trying to hurry up. Y'all that's right, y'all go ahead and clap. I feel like clapping. Go ahead. Come on. Is there a praise spirit in the house tonight? Is somebody grateful to be here tonight? Y'all act like it. Uh-oh, listen to that. I heard it. I heard it. And all God's people said amen. amen. What's going on, Sean? Good to see you, man. Bless you, man. Look at that, all my friends. Bless you. Listen, we're going to come with two selections. I don't know how long they're supposed to be, but you do. And if it go over time, me and you are going to have a talk. Amen. But y'all know what to do. Come on. What's the name of the choir for the week? City wide. City wide. City wide. Hey. Come on, put your hands together for the city wide revival choir. Come on, shut. Come on now. I know y'all been working all day, working for the man. He gone now. We got Jesus. Yes, serve him, praise him. Come on, choir, wake him up.
is healing for your sorrow. There's healing for your pain. Healing for your spirit. There's shelter.
that's a good place to give God some worship. That's a good place to give him some. We're here to celebrate. We're here to celebrate. This ain't a funeral. We're here to give him the glory. We're here to give him the worship. We're here to give him the praise. We are thankful. We ought to be thankful. We ought to be thankful. Thank the Lord. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him for all the many things he's done. Thank him for all the ways he's made. Thank him. We thank you, Lord. Hey! Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord some praise. Some church on a Tuesday night in local. Amen. I know what y'all trying to do. sing like that. I can't do that no more. Well, that young man sung that song. Amen. But he is the uh, senior pastor of the Fellowship Church here in Oakland, California. He has a presentation for us tonight. Come on, show him some love. Give him a big amen, some hand claps for Bishop K.D. Henderson. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that within me. Bless his holy name. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. And I don't know about you, but I was trying to keep my composure. You know, choir singing. My toes were twitching, and I was just trying to keep. Because they were playing my song. You catch that on the way home. I said they were playing my song. They act like they want to have church. But I'm here. Let me, let me, stop. Let me just stop. I'm, just, I, I, I'm sorry. Let me get back. I get to Rex every now and then when I think of what he's done for me. I, we gotta go we gotta 
Watch it. Come on, put those hands together. Shout it, yeah. Don't do it, give it about 30 seconds. One, two, one. Watch it, daughter, watch it, watch it. Put those hands together. Give God some praise. We greet you in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We have partnered with the Fellowship Church, with the Alameda County Sheriff Department, to put on a community job fair. Now, Alameda County Sheriff Department invites you to learn about the rewarding career opportunities at Alameda County Sheriff's Office. This will be a friendly family event that would include food, <laughs> drinks, rock climbing, opportunity to meet some of the members of the Alameda County Sheriff's Office, questions about hiring process, and discover how you can make a difference in your community with a career in public safety. Now here are some of the positions. Deputy Sheriff could recruit, Deputy Sheriff one, that's post-grad, Deputy Sheriff two. Of course, you have to make sure that you have no felons, and you can be, yeah, you can be, but this, this is what's exciting. They will still hire you, even if you're a felon but not for a sworn officer position. You have emergency service dispatchers, one and two. Typically, all you need is a high school diploma, type 40 words a minute, and anywhere from $70,000 to $90,000 a year. Sheriff, uh, the sheriff technicians, you're responsible for collecting forensic evidence for crime scenes, and uh, some cases, you have some that have drones, and they take aerial shots of crime scenes. Sheriff Safety A. Now, I like this job here. Listen, you know the individual that sits on the side of the airport and say, please move your car? You can't park here? $30, Rhonda, an hour. Entry level. I'm trying to help you tonight. <laughs> Sheriff Service Cadet, for those who have children that are young adults, grandchildren that are in JCs, colleges. You can have a service, a sheriff's service cadet position for $22 to $24 an hour. Now, competitive salaries, paid vacation two to five weeks, paid sick leave, 12 paid holidays, medical, dental, vision plan, pension plan. Oh, yeah. Saturday, April 13, 2024, between 12 p.m. and 3 p.m. Uh, there will be presentations uh, at 12, 1, and 2 at the Lily the Valley Christian Center at 10, 10, 91st Avenue. It starts at 12 noon. Now, you worried about your car getting broken? Don't sweat it. We got you. We got you. There are individuals that will be on the ground tactic tactically making sure that nobody's car has been broken in. And please, I've been taught better than this. Please forgive me, President. Let me give all deference to the President of the Baptist Ministers Union. Can y'all do me a favor? I'm sorry. I got excited. They were playing my music. Amen. But into his cabinet, we're just honored. Thank you for the opportunity. We have more flyers. We'll leave them at the back do door with the ushers. Amen. Please don't miss out on opportunity. You, a great opportunity. Put your hands back together. We're now in the hands up. Come, give it up for the choir. Come on, you can do better than that. Give it up for the choir. And all God's people said amen. amen. Uh, how much are these jobs paying? Uh, <laughs> oh, 
y'all look, I need some benefits. Y'all looking to me like y'all are playing. Y'all high, high retired people? So you know what they say. Set, uh oh. I ain't got a felon either. I'm going after that job. Y'all say amen for Bishop Henderson. Amen. amen. Thank you so much for that presentation. At this time, we're going to bring up uh, another one of our officers of the BMU. Uh, you know him. Uh, he is well known here in the area. Uh, good to see some pastors out there. God bless you. Good to see you. You are welcome to sit with us, Pastor. Uh, amen. But come on, put your hands together for uh, Pastor Martin R. Peters, the senior pastor of the Victory Church. Yeah. Oakland, California. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm not going to be before you long, um, but we are, we are in revival. And uh, as we were on my podcast Saturday night with Pastor Wheelock, uh, the choir been in revival. Uh, they've been in revival since March. So don't y'all sit there and just watch them burn. They've been shouting like this in choir rehearsal. Uh, they, ha they, have four, they have four years together now. This is, this is our fourth year in leadership, uh, President Wheelock, and uh, I serve as first vice president, and tonight our preacher is here. I got him here safely. He's about to come in in a few minutes, all the way from Dallas, Texas. The Lord gave him safe travel, and we are waiting with tiptoe anticipation on the manifestation that shall come through the man of God tonight. The Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglas Haynes the third. All right. So my job is to uh, look after the president. Amen. That's my job. I, I coordinate the revival, but I also uh, look after the president. And I got to make the president look good because number one, he is my biological cousin. <laughs> Ty Wheelock is my biological cousin. Uh, and let me, I don't know if I ever told anybody this, but this is how we found out. I was helping my grandmother, bless her soul, my grandmother was 100 years old, uh, died January 9th. She just died this year at 100 years old. Um, and uh, I was helping Nana, thank y'all, I was helping Nana clean up and do some stuff. And I was like, all right, Nana, do you know anything else you want me to do? Because I'm about to go hear my boy Ty We like preach tonight. And she was like, you going to go hear who? I said, Ty Wheelock. She said, well, I'm related to the Wheelocks. I said, for real? She was like, yes, I'm related to the Wheelocks. And so she said, ask him, do he know Israel? Ask him, do he know Ruth? Ask him, is his daddy named John and, and, and Israel? And I, I, so I go, to, and I go to St. Rest. He's in revival at St. Rest. And I, I said, like, hey, Ty, is your daddy named John? And do you got uncle named so so? He was like, yeah. I was like, hey, man, we related. We have been running together for about 20 years and found out we were biologically related. So the next night, we had a family reunion at the altar at St. Rest. All my aunts was there. All of the Wheelocks was there. And we've been running together ever since. Because we, we, we real kinfolk. So our president receives no salary for his work in the community. Ever since the firing of Chief Leron Armstrong, we've had town halls right here hosted by our president. Yeah. News reporters have come here and done interviews right here in the sanctuary of the Antioch Baptist Church. I said all that to say is, we don't have a lazy president. And we don't have one that sits at his desk and hide behind his desk. Nah, he comes out. And anything I know, I'm going to let the president know so that he, will, that he will be aware and attentive of what's going on in our cities. It's a whole lot going on in Oakland, y'all. And it's a whole lot not going on in Oakland. <laughs> Everything is closing up in Oakland. And we have an incompetent mayor in office. Who don't know her elbow from her finger. Amen. 
I'm real. I keep it real. I got an 80 year old mama and a 91 year old daddy that live in the city of Oakland. And they're scared to come out the house because it's so crazy. Listen, y'all, these day and time, you don't lock your door because you think you may fall out. You lock your door because you think somebody may fall in. Y'all will catch that tomorrow about 2.30. And so we want to bless our president on Friday night. Our ushers are coming. We have some envelopes made up with our president name on there. And we're asking everyone. We're not asking for no specific amount. We're just asking everyone uh, to turn in your envelopes and uh, put a little love in there. And I'm asking all the pastors, at least for $100, to put in our president's love offering. I'll never ask y'all to do nothing that I'm not willing to do. I will have my $100 in there. We just go, we just gonna do it all at, at one time. If you wanna use the uh, swipe, um, please see uh, finance team over here. And uh, you all, please, let's just show a little love to encourage him. We did the same thing with previous presidents and we're not gonna stop at Todd M. Wheelock. We're gonna continue the tradition, all right? I'm finished, God bless y'all. And we are on time, y'all, we on time. All right, choir, come on, give us one song. One more song right now. Come on, a good hot one. All of y'all, all of them hot.
trust in you. Trust in you. In every situation, I'll trust in you. as they come on down. Amen. We're in for a great time. It's good to see one of our past presidents, my alum from Bishop Collins, amen, for the Reverend Dr. 
Lawrence Van Hook. Come on. Thank you, President Van Hook. Come on, show your amen for him. Amen. Thank you, Brother President, for showing up. Amen. Amen. And at this time, we're going to have the introduction of our revivalists for tonight. And all God's people said amen. Reverend Dr. Frederick Haynes has served as the visionary and innovative senior pastor of Friendship West Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas for over four years. Under his leadership, Reverend Dr. Frederick Haynes has served as the visionary and innovative senior pastor of Friendship West Baptist Church in Dallas, Texas for over four years. Under his leadership, the ministry and membership of the church has grown from less than 100 members in 1983 to over 13,000. Despite being discouraged by a negative assessment of his academic ability, he was one of three valid Victorian speakers when he graduated from Abraham Lincoln High School in San Francisco. Dr. Haynes continued his education at Bishop College in Dallas, Texas in 1982 with a BA degree in religion and English. In 1996, he earned a Master of Divinity degree from Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary. In 2005, Dr. Haynes received his doctorate in ministry from the Graduate Theological Foundation, where he was offered the opportunity to study at Christ Church, Oxford University in Oxford, England. On July 15, 2023, Dr. Haynes was named as the president and CEO of the Rainbow Push Coalition as the successor of Reverend Jesse L. Jackson Sr. A committed community activist, Dr. Haynes has formed alliances and partnerships with local, national, and global leaders and Dallas city officials to fight social injustice, domestic violence, and poverty. Dr. Haynes has been frequently invited to the White House in order to address issues ranging from the state of the economy to voting and civil rights. He was publicly applauded by President Barack Obama for developing the Thrive Intern and Leadership Program, which employed nearly 100 young black males between the ages of 16 and 19. Since its inception, the program has expanded and now employs both young men and women with local businesses and at the church at a pay rate above minimum wage. A lifelong learner, Dr. Haynes is committed to education and has led Friendship West to donate over $3 million to historically black colleges and universities and students who are members of the church and greater Dallas community. Dr. Haynes is married to entrepreneur Deborah P. Haynes. They have one daughter, Abney Jewel Haynes. Dr. Haynes is a prophetic pastor passionate leader, social activist, and educator engaged in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and fighting against social injustice. Please welcome Reverend Dr. Frederick Douglas Haynes III. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. Shall we pray? God, we thank you and praise you for your goodness, your grace, your love, your guidance. We thank you for watching over us, for being so faithful. And then, God, we thank you for the possibility of revival. We thank you that we're not here by accident. We're here because you planned it. And since you are already here and you've met us here, we need a word from you. We need to hear from you. If we don't hear from you, God, what shall we do? 
So please remove any distractions that may divert our attention. Don't let me or anything in me or about me get in the way of what you are up to and what you want to say and accomplish through me. Have your way. Revive us again. Speak to us. I'm available to be used as your instrument. So stand in my body, take over my mind, and think your thoughts. Take my mouth now and speak with power your word. Bless your word. And give such power to your word that none of us leave here the same way we came. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Our God is good and God is worthy of worship and worthy to be praised. Listen, I am Peacock Proud, honeymoon happy uh, to be back in the Bay Area, the Yay Area, uh, especially uh, here at uh, Antioch for the Citywide Revival. I am honored and humbled uh, to have the opportunity to share again. This year I, I had such a great time. Last year I had to uh, bribe the president uh, and Marty to let me come back again this year. So I want to thank you all for accepting my bribe. Uh, but I appreciate so much uh, this honor and this opportunity uh, to share. I am uh, trying not to smile too broadly because uh, what happened, uh, I text my sister and my cousin. And just a few minutes ago, I said, want you all to know uh, I'm in Oakland for the Citywide Revival, and so my sister, Michelle, she responds with, who is this? Uh, and then Roxanne, she didn't respond at all, and they here in church. And so I'm so happy to see my fam in the house. Good to see Ron, good to see Taylor. And who's that grown man sitting between you and Taylor? Can't believe Ryan is looking all grown. And my cuz, Foxy Roxy, my sister, Michelle. And, and just earlier today, I was on the phone with Gant, and he asked about Douglas. Douglas is in the house. Good to see you, man. Thank you so much. So glad to see my fam. And then my cuz, Jenny, good to see you in the house. It's like a family reunion. I sure appreciate this, because then I got my, my bishop fam in the house. And so uh, that that lights my fire and melts my butter. So I'm glad to see all of y'all. Let me just say that, just glad to see all of y'all. I wanna give a special shout out though uh, to my beloved friend and brother, uh, the president, uh, Pastor Todd Wheelock. I praise God for him. Uh, Antioch, I came because uh, y'all owe us some money. He preached for us in Dallas uh, at Friendship West in August, and it was really jacked up because I'm on vacation. I said, man, come by, preach for us. And then he wipes the house out. And our facility is relatively new. And so uh, we're repairing the roof right now. And so uh, whoever your finance people are, we need some money uh, to pay for the roof. But thank you so much, man. He is a gifted preacher, uh, a courageous leader, uh, who stands on principle, and God is using him. And this week, as far as I'm concerned, is an historic week. Uh, I'm excited about Thursday night. Uh, I, I, I can't wait till Thursday night. I'm gonna tune in, uh, try to redo my schedule uh, so I could be here, but I can't wait, because uh, I know uh, Pastor Jackie is gonna do what Pastor Jackie does. Uh, that's a bad sister right there. And so thank you so much, man, for your courage, your trailblazing leadership, because uh, I don't know if this has been done by any citywide revival in the country. And so I'm so proud, and I praise God. Uh, Marty Peters is my brother beloved. Thank you so much. Uh, and then Van Hook, Lord Jesus, good to see you, man. I'm just, I'm just glad to see all y'all. Thank you all for being here. And thank you for your friendship and brotherhood. I want to take the next uh, tonight and tomorrow night and just share with us uh, some blessings from benedictions uh, found in, in Scripture. And so I want tonight to look at Jude 24 and 25. Jude 24 and 25. It reads, Now unto him 
who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. You may be seated in God's presence. For just a few moments with your prayers, I'd like to use as a subject from which to preach, standing on business. Standing on business. MC Light puts it like this. When she raps, you can be whatever you want to be, but if you let negativity ruin, run you, it will ruin your destiny. In a real sense, MC Light recognizes that there are persons who have positive plans that are poisoned by a negative spirit. You can be what you want to be, but let negativity run you, it will ruin your destiny. I like that because MC Light, in essence, is saying that if you're not careful, insecurity will cause you to get in your own way. Insecurity will cause you to love on those who are really killing you. Insecurity, if you're not careful, my sisters and brothers, will not only cause you to get in your own way, but insecurity will cause you to live as a doormat and allow people to walk on you, leave their dirt on you, and then leave you outside as they go inside. Condemnation of blackness where he takes a look at the fact that we live in a nation that has condemned us because of the color of our skin. As a matter of fact, I think Ice Cube raps about it when Ice says our sin is our skin in what Maya Angelou calls these yet to be United States of America. I'm simply letting you know my sisters and brothers, they had every reason reason to feel insecure. Why? Because injustice had undermined what they were looking forward to. And if you live long enough, you'll discover that injustice will call what injustice will undermine what it is you were attempting to do. You're looking at me strange, but some of you work on a job where injustice is manifest in the pay scale because you work harder than other folk and yet you you end up, in spite of working hard, you, you end up training those who don't look like you, and before you know it, you have to answer to them. And yes, my sisters and brothers, it is really sad, yet sick, yet significant that injustice will, in, will infect what it is you are inspired to do. So here they are in prison for something they did not do, and they're told, don't be scared, don't be scared also don't be scared because watch it Claude had just witnessed Ray getting his behind whoop Ray his buddy Ray who had come to prison with him was a victim of violence. I think I'll stop right there because all around us is violence from Houston to Harlem, Dallas to Detroit, from, from as it were, not only Dallas to Detroit, but even Oakland to Miami. We discover, my sisters and brothers, that violence, senseless violence, is enough to cause one to move through the streets in fear. Senseless violence is enough to cause one to have have your head on a swivel knowing at any time something could go wrong and even though you're trying to do what's right life has gone wrong because of senseless violence wait it's not just senseless violence in our cities in the country but we see hell in Haiti we see chaos in the Congo and suffering in the Sudan not to mention the sad reality that this country is financing genocide in Gaza, not to mention a famine that is taking place because this it 
administration stuck on stupid is standing by an administration over in Israel that really cares nothing about this administration. I had to tell the president to his face during a visit to the White House that you are concerned about an election where we really may lose democracy. Are you willing as president to lose democracy because you're standing by a country that's engaged in fascism itself? I'm letting you know, my sisters and brothers, all of this going on is enough to cause one to feel insecure. I'm still not coming through like I need to, but the word is don't be scared and don't be scared. The Bible puts it this way, fear not, fear not. Y'all still didn't get it, so I got to see if I can use what I saw recently. I read about a mudslide that took place in Southern California. Of course, I'm watching all the weather in Southern California. I got fam down there. My daughter lives there. And so I'm watching the fact that mudslides had taken place. And when the mudslides took place, some 100 homes were damaged. Some 17 lives were lost because of mudslides. And, and a family, a black family, the Williams family, had moved to Montecito, California. And when they moved to Montecito, they bought a home with an amazing view. They had a home that allowed them to view the beauty of the Pacific Ocean. And yet their dream home all of a sudden found itself in the midst of a nightmare they never saw coming. The rain was relentless. The torrential thunderstorm caused mudslides. And as the mud was sliding, homes all around them gave way on their foundation and were sliding down the hill into devastation and so Donnell Williams gathers his family in the living room determined to stay right there but then all of a sudden across the street lightning strikes and when lightning struck it caused a fire to break out and that's when he said we've got to get up out of here he gathers his family and they get as much stuff as they can. They put it in the car, pull out of the driveway, and when they pulled down the street, a cop stopped them because they had missed the evacuation order. The cop said, all of the roads are covered in mud. There's nothing you can do except go back to your house and hope that everything is okay. That's what they have to do. They retreat back to their home, pull into the driveway, and then they huddle in the living room as night begins to fall. The rain is relentless. The lightning is playing zigzag games. The thunder is rolling and the winds are howling all around them. They hear homes crashing as they are unsettled from their foundation and heading down the hill. And here they are, the Williams family, stuck like Chuck. Listen to Donnell Williams. Williams as he testifies we were on the one hand a prisoner of a predicament over which we had no control we were slaves in a storm that was coming down so here we are in a predicament over which we have no control the storm is raging and on top of that imagine the feeling of insecurity insecure in a situation over which you have have no control. I got to park right here because already I'm in somebody's Kool-Aid. I just called out your flavor and you get the metaphor, don't you? It's bad enough a storm is raging, but on top of that, everything around you is not looking good. And then to magnify your misery, you were caught up in your own feelings of insecurity. Well, my sisters and brothers, that's exactly what's happening to the audience audience that is addressed by Jude in our text. Jude, my sisters and brothers, is addressing an audience that knows a whole lot about insecurity. After all, the storms of situations all around them are raging. Jude is a really short book, but it covers so much territory because so much hell is breaking out in their lives. And then to 
make matters worse, the book lets us know that there are those who are engaged in false teaching and their false teaching has resulted in a theology that is being unpacked that is poisonous. It is toxic, a toxic theology. I think I'll hang out right there because Jude says, I need y'all to contend for the faith. I need y'all to contend for the faith and then watch what Jude does as Jude allows them to have what the Akan people in Ghana call a Sankofa moment where they look back in order to move forward. I like that right there because Sankofa is the picture of a bird that is looking back while it is moving forward. It has an egg in its beak that it has pulled from out of itself symbolizing possibility and potential. You didn't shout. I'll make it real plain. Sometimes you've got to look back in order to move forward. You didn't shout. I'll give it to you like this. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far along the way, that's looking back so you can move forward through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. It was grace that brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me on. That's looking back so you can move forward. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? He kept my enemies away. Let the sun shine through a cloudy day. And then he rocked me in the cradle of his arms. I'm letting you know every now and then you got to look back in order to move forward. That's why Harry S. Wright put it this way. I know what God can do because I've seen what God has done. I'm preaching. Y'all just missed your shout. And so whenever you find yourself wondering how you're going to handle right now, just remember what what God did back then and if you know what God has done you can anticipate what God will do preach Freddie Haynes I already am understand my sisters and brothers that Jude has them to contend for the faith by looking back he wants them to get their theology right because if you're not careful a twisted theology will poison your psychology and mess up your sociology I'm preaching y'all just missed your shout. You see, when you have a theology that recognizes God as a God of life, love, and liberation, that recognizes that God loves you and, and will love the hell out of you, that God made you. And when God made you, God patted God's self on God's back, and God said, boom, that's good. Y'all didn't shout. I got to help you. That's a word for anybody incarcerated in, in security and that is when God made you God didn't make a mistake God said boom that's good and my sisters and brothers Jew now is unpacking because there's a concern about some of the low lowlifes and what they are doing to the people of faith in terms of the false teaching and I love it because Jude says don't y'all worry just remember God is going to always have the last word the world doesn't belong to Republicans or rich folk. It doesn't belong to Trump or traitors. It doesn't belong to Democrats or Dixiecrats. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. That shouts me right there because our country is in a bad way. This election year is going to determine if this nation continues to try for for democracy or if it will fall over into neo-crystal fascism but the good news is God is still in control and if God is in control I'm not unsure and insecure about the future because I know God has got this I know that God is running stuff y'all still not shouting I guess I'll go ahead and give you what you does he walks through the chapter and then comes to verse 24 and says now y'all didn't shout I gotta go back and give it to you one more time Joe Jude has done all of that he has warned them against false teachers New Testament scholar Larry George says he hurls rhetorical assaults on false teachers and reminds them of the theology 
that was once delivered to the saints and then uh, look what he does he opens up the close with now now is a conjunction I ain't smart like Todd so I didn't always know what a conjunction was but back in the day I'm watching cartoons on a Saturday morning and schoolhouse rock taught me about a conjunction conjunction junction what's y'all saw that thing didn't you and I discovered the function of a conjunction is to connect what's before with what's after. And when you see the conjunction now, it lets you know that what's about to come is connected to everything that has just been said. And so if you're feeling insecure, here's your shout now unto him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you flawless, faultless before his majesty with exceeding joy to the only wise God be glory and majesty dominion and power now and forever amen I think y'all got that thing you see I knew I was coming here so I had to do my homework and etymologically I looked at that word Marty it's gonna kill you the word now unto him who was able to keep you from stumbling from falling it's a picture that was used of horses in biblical antiquity who were navigating ground that was unstable, that was rocky, and, and the horses, because of how they've been cosmically created, they're able to navigate rocky terrain and stand up and, 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 and refuse to fall in spite of what's rocky. Y'all didn't get horses. We in Oakland, I'll see if I can make it plain. I want to give, oh, I, here it is. This this is your shout right here. The shout is, imagine if I had a cat up here and I pushed the cat off of the podium. I don't care how high the podium is, by the time the cat gets to the ground, somehow the cat is going to land on its feet. And y'all, it dawned on me that cats in a real sense say to all of us, it doesn't mean you won't get pushed. It doesn't mean folk won't try to knock you down. But the shout of tonight is you going to land on your feet. And somebody is here tonight, and that's your testimony. You've been pushed, you've been knocked around, but you keep on landing on your feet. And when you land on your feet, here's your shout, you stand on business. Stand on business. Stand on business. Well, I got to go with my hip-hop folk tonight because unless you're in the culture, you ain't really understanding that my subject is fly. My subject is fire. I see you. You know what stand on business is in the culture. There's a picturesque phrase that says stand on business. I'm standing on business. Who is it? I think it's Drake. Even raps about it because Drake says they sitting down. Hey, we standing on business. When you're standing on business it means that you are that that you are standing on what's right you are you are unafraid and unapologetic you are handling your business and because you're handling your business you are about that life you are handling stuff the right way and so as a consequence you are standing on business when you're standing on business you you unafraid and unapologetic when you're standing on a business you don't care what folks come at you with you recognize when God inhabits you can't nobody inhibit you when you're standing on business you discover that folk may come for you who you did not send for but when they come for you they soon discover if God is with you who can be against you because you standing on business Oh, y'all didn't shout. I got to help you. I got to help you. You know who stood on business in spite of being hit by all kinds of threats? Martin King. Martin King, if you check out, what is it, the documentary, it's entitled uh, uh, A King in the Wilderness on HBO. Check it out. King in the Wilderness, his last year was hell. Folk, folk love him now, but, but back then... His last year, they hated King. King was, was not welcome at the White House. He stood against the unjust war in Vietnam. 
and he was living every day under the threat of death so much so he developed a nervous twitch under his eye and the twitch was always there and all of a sudden about a week before he died Harry Belafonte testified he heard Kang King speak and when he heard him speak he noticed the twitch was gone and he asked King what happened King said I don't fear death anymore I'm alright now no matter what may come and just a week later he's in Memphis Tennessee and he closes out that great speech with these words and then I got into Memphis and some began to talk about the threats about what would happen to me from some of our sick white brothers I don't know what will happen now we've got some difficult days ahead but it really doesn't matter with me now like anybody, I'd like to live a long life. Longevity has its place. But I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will. And he's allowed me to go up to the mountain. And I've looked over and I've seen the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land. So I'm happy tonight. I'm not worried about anything. I'm not fearing anything. Any man, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. Y'all didn't shout. I guess y'all didn't get king. I'm going to give you the king of kings because Jesus stood on business. Do y'all see Jesus standing on business in the synagogue when he announces the spirit of the Lord God is upon me? He's anointed me to preach good news to the poor, set the captives free, heal those who are broken, open the eyes of the blind, deliver those who are downtrodden, proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I'm standing on business. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. I'm standing on business. Yeah. Yes, I'm about to get lynched on Good Friday, but I'm going to stand on business. And he says, in this world, you're going to have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And then Pilate tried to get smart and say, don't you know, I got power to kill you. Jesus said, I'm standing on business. Don't nobody take my life. I lay it down. And if I lay it down, I'll pick it back up again because I'm standing on business and that's why I came to Oakland to say tonight whatever else you do stand on business and if you stand on business it gives you strength for your security how does it work I'm almost done watch the text I'm gonna just walk through it can I walk through it watch the text it begins with we stand on business because we're protected we stand on business because of our possibilities and we stand on business and give God praise I'm almost done watch the text we stand on business because we are protected look at the text now under him who is able to keep you. Stop. Stop right there. I'm talking too fast. I'm going to slow my roll so y'all can all get this thing. The text says, now under him. You, 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 you didn't shout on him? You must not know who him is. Because once you know who him is, him will make you shout all by yourself. If you know who him is, him heart fixer him mind regulator him burden bearer him heavy load sharer him rock in a weary land him bridge over troubled waters him doctor when you're sick him lawyer when you're in does anybody know him 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 now under him watch it who is able oh my god O-M to the Jeezy, I got to stop right there. The word able, the word able was used also in Matthew 3 when it said that Jesus has the kind of power where he can raise up children of Abraham from stones. It's a metaphor for an ability to do the impossible. So, so when I'm feeling insecure, now unto him, I know who him is, who is able. When I don't have power, he's got power I don't have. So now under him who is able, here's your shout, to keep you. 
Stop right there. Stop right there. That's what I've been trying to get to. God is able to keep you. The word keep in the Greek, it means protect. The word keep, it means to hold you. It means to keep you in a secure fashion. And so when you find yourself feeling insecure, just remember God can keep you. God can protect you. God can secure you. Y'all didn't shout. I got to bring some witnesses to the stand. Uh, come here. Who is it? Daniel. Daniel is thrown in the lion's den. And when he got thrown, the king wasn't feeling it. But there were haters who did not like Daniel. And they decided that they were going to get at Daniel through Daniel's strength, which was his prayer life. And so they misused the law in order to do what was unjust because everything legal ain't necessarily just preach Freddie I just did a lot of stuff is legal but God knows it ain't just y'all didn't shout slavery legal but not just Jim and Jane Crow apartheid legal but not just apartheid in South Africa legal but not just women not having the right to vote legal but not just black busting legal but not just I could call the role of how the law has been used in an unjust fashion and that's what's happening and so understand Daniel gets thrown in the lion's den here comes your shout right here and the king the next morning sh uh, shouts into the lion's den Daniel are you okay did your God protect you and the Bible says Daniel answered Okay, that, 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 I, I got to go back one more time because y'all, he spent all night with hungry, voracious lions. The king says, Daniel, are you here? The Bible says, Daniel, boom. The fact that he answered was a testimony, I'm still here. I think that's your shout right there. And that is the fact that you are still here. The fact that in spite of all you've been through, all your haters tried to do to you, and yet every morning you answer the bell, wake up and move through your day, it's because God secured you. Okay, 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 that didn't get you. Oh, this will, this will. Uh, Roxanne, Jeremiah Wright remixes Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. It's fire. I got to give it to you. Jeremiah Wright says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused during the Babylonian national anthem. They refused to bow. They took a knee. And when they took a knee, watch what happened. It ticked off Nebuchadnezzar. Neb is hostile. Neb is ticked off. And Neb says, bring them here. Tells them, if y'all don't bow down, you're going to burn and you better bend. And the Bible lets us know the Hebrew boy said, we ain't going bow bend or burn because the God we serve is able to deliver us and he will deliver us but if not we still ain't bowing down here's the shout shout is they got thrown in the fire when they got thrown in the fire, Jeremiah Wright says God convened an angelic council up in eternity and said, yo, I got to get my boys out. Who's quick enough to get them out? And Gabriel says, I got this thing, God. And God said, gee, how long will it take you? He said, just give me 90 seconds. I can make it from heaven to earth. He says, no, I don't want a hair singed on their head. The archangel Michael said, God, you know I'm your quickest angel, so let me me go down and that's when God said how long Mike he said only 30 seconds no I don't want them smelling like smoke they said well God what you gonna do I'm gonna handle it myself well God how long will it take you God said check it I'm already there and the book says God got in the fire with him can I shout you God ain't got to take you out of the fire. God can get in the fire with you and walk you around free We are protected. We're protected. But not only are we protected, now under him who is able to keep you from, there it is. And watch it. Not only are you not going to fall, but he's going to present you faultless before his majesty 
with exceeding joy. We are a people of possibility. When you see me now, it ain't all I'm going to be. That's why Howard Thurman said, never reduce your dreams to the current experience of where you find yourself. You have to always have, I got to use some big words to show off my education, an eschatological hope as you navigate your existential hell. That was good right there. I'm going to break that thing down, okay? Eschatology has to do with the end. In the end, we win. Existential has to do with existence. What's happening in existence right now? When you know God for yourself, you live with an eschatological hope as you're navigating your existential hell. Eschatological hope. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. Weeping is during the existential hell but joy is coming for your eschatological hope y'all still not getting this thing watch it watch it here's our hope he says he says now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless faultless I I got to go to the beehive now Taylor and say say maybe he said we're gonna be Beyonce flawless Yeah, that was good. Y'all just don't. Okay, okay, okay. So, so God's going to present you flawless when you stand before God. Flawless. Oh, that shouts me because I know my dirt. I know my mud. And yet I know God is working on me. I know God is doing stuff to get me to become what I'm supposed to become. And Gardner Taylor says in the judgment, because we know Jesus, if we're standing next to Jesus, the, the angels are going to look and see us and Jesus and try to figure out which one. Y'all didn't shout. I'll see if I can shout. Beloved, now are we the sons and daughters of God and it doth not yet appear what we shall be but when we see him we're going to be just like him because we'll see him as he is those are my possibilities I'm protected I got possibilities and I'm gonna get my praise on here it is I'm almost done watch the text it says now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before his majesty with, with great joy to, to the all-wise God, our Savior. Stop right there. Stop right there. Now, this was, for everybody who hates politics in church, watch this. The word Savior, especially during the time of Jesus, was a politicized word. Because Caesar called himself Savior. And so when Jesus is known as Savior, it is a subversive resistance to the oppression and occupation of the Roman Empire. Oh, you didn't shout. I'm trying to simply let you know Savior means deliverer. It means preserver. It means protector. And so when Caesar said he was savior, Caesar didn't recognize as another savior. Matter of fact, you tried to lynch him on Friday, but to show who got the last word, early Sunday morning, God raised him from the dead. Y'all didn't shout. Y'all do know that they sealed it with the stone. The, the stone was sealed with the seal of Rome. So when the stone was rolled away in essence Jesus was saying I got the last word even Rome can't hold me down even Rome cannot have the last word on me Rome does not have all power I have all power so so to God be the glory dominion power now and forever amen it, it, it's really it's really getting your praise on recognizing it, it's giving God a shout out because God is worthy to be praised and shout out I thought that would get y'all because because shout out is what happens watch this somebody gets an award and they know they didn't get there by themselves and they give shout outs to everybody who helped them get there and every now and then you ought to give God a shout out 
because you know good and well you ain't where you are because of your own ingenuity and you give God a shout out uh, man I, I, I remember why I love preaching here because I'm preaching my heart out I've given you shout bomb after shout bomb and, and I knew you'd be shouting by now but you ain't and I know why you're not shouting you're ready to shout but you haven't shouted yet and I know why because you're thinking you're thinking I know what you're thinking you're thinking but hold on what about the Williams family you you left the Williams family in Montecito with mudslides all around them did the Williams family survive first of all I'm quoting Donnell Williams I couldn't quote him if they did not survive and so the fact I'm quoting him lets you know that Donnell Williams and family survived I'm trying to let somebody know you can look at your neighbor and say to your neighbor you know what the bottom line is you see me here right now but you don't know what I got went through to get where I am right now just know the fact that I'm present, I am a miracle. Let me give y'all Donnell Williams and I'm done and I'll see y'all tomorrow night. Donnell's testimony was they stayed in the living room that night and they prayed and they turned on the flashlight and they got into God's word and they came to Jude 24, 25 now under him who is able to keep you from falling and then his wife began to go through the house just saying now under him who is able to keep you from falling and then they went to sleep woke up the next day the home is still standing and then the police came rang the doorbell to make sure they were good and they said yes they said what well, the police officer says I don't get it why didn't your home go crashing down he said let's go in the backyard they went in the backyard and that's when Donnell discovered that right behind the fence was was a huge boulder and the boulder was as wide as their home and so tall that when the mud was coming down the mud could not get over the boulder it went around the boulder and as a consequence their home is still standing because there was a rock that got between them and the mud I'm done but y'all know there's a rock that will keep you standing y'all know there's a rock that will give you power and protection rock of ages cleft for me let me hide myself in thee Jesus is a rock in a weary land the shelter in time of storm I'll see y'all tomorrow night but is there anybody here who is standing on business because you know there's a rock when I need a shelter I go to the rock when I need to be protected I go to the rock the rock of my salvation the stone the builder rejected and it's because of the rock I'm standing on bid Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play that, play that gently, gently. Play it, play, play. This, this moment right here, I know people feel that they need to move. So, but close, close that door. Something special is happening in this place. Yeah, you know, you felt it when you walked in. Something different. Listen, I don't need to do a whole lot of talking because Jesus is talking to somebody right now. And there don't need to be no distractions because I was one day lost, sinking and singing. I was sinking to rise no more. Somebody said, far. You say far because you know you were far too, just like I was. Far from the peaceful show. But check it. We heard a sound, a voice. It 
says. Some stuff you ain't got to study no more like war. Conflict with yourself. Come on, sup with me. That was a time I'm listening to 1986 Citywide Revival. Right? Trying to get the flavor. They said that during this week, crime in Oakland went down. And the reason that crime in Oakland went down was because it wasn't because of more police. But there was a spiritual engagement that was going on in the city of Oakland. And guess what? There's a spiritual engagement that's going on right now. So I'm going to say it like this. What you playing? What's that? If you can play. That sound like what? Okay, y'all sing that. Mm. I wish I knew that song. I was singing with you. Sing it one more time. Oh, cry. Any silent? That's all I know. All of the ground, all of the ground it is. Sing it. Sing it one more time. Sing it again. Oh, you're going to bite your on me. The solid. say this. Give me a second. One second. Yeah, that's the hum that, hum that. I remember old school. You know, James Cleveland, stuff like that. Listen, if you're here tonight, and I mean this, if you have not accepted Christ as your personal Savior, you are not standing on business. You may think you are, but you are not. But you have an opportunity tonight to change the narrative and not be that which wags the dog. But you can be the head of what God wants for you do. You heard the sermon tonight. You heard, I heard it too. I'm ready. Because he able. And I know he. I know him. I know who him is. But if you don't know who him is, I invite you to understand who him is. Is there somebody? I don't, I don't know how they do it these days. Sometimes they have confession booths where people will go and talk to somebody else because they don't want to get up in front of a whole bunch of people 
right? So to me, either or, if you get it on your way home in the car tonight, by yourself between you and God, that means you got it. And I'll just say, see you in the morning. Listen, bring somebody else that you think may not have accepted Christ. Just maybe, I don't know. And for those of you who are online, who have been watching and checking us out on Facebook tonight, we want you to continue to share also. There's many ways we now can stand on this business. And if we can use technology to stand on this business, then let's use technology to stand on this business. Amen. 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 Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord some praise. He's worthy. parking lot. Hey Amen. Listen, I'm getting ready to bring, you know what? Because that one of them cars is my cars. If you got a car in the, across the street in the parking lot at the school, the janitor is getting ready to close up. So you can do like with me. Do quick and quicker to get over there so you can get your car. I'm going to bring, come on, put your hands together for President Todd M. Wheeler. Come on, show him some love tonight. Come on. Our president. Amen. Come on, let's give this preacher another big warm round of applause. Wasn't that an awesome word? That was a mighty word, a tremendous word. Were you blessed by the word? I think I need to ask you again, were you blessed by the word? Amen, amen. I'm trying to wait on us to readjust because I don't think all these people are parked across the street. Amen. It's only about 10 cars over there, and I wish y'all would have let me get the money before they left. Amen, amen, because I got to pay the bills. You understand? Amen. I rose, I rose tonight because if you were blessed by this preaching, then you know that uh, preaching like this, we've, we've spared no expense. We want to represent the city of Oakland in a marvelous way. And then to bring this caliber preacher here, we cannot bring him and not treat him fairly. Amen. Because I don't want it said that I came to Oakland, my hometown, and they didn't treat me correctly. So I need your help tonight. I need your help. I, I tried to find the best preaching I could find. I, 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 I tried to find the best preaching that I could bring to the city of Oakland. I didn't want to bring no garbage. I didn't want to bring no trash. I wanted to bring somebody who I know was going to preach an amazing word. And didn't he do that? So look, I need your help tonight. I need your help tonight because we got to get off to a good start. And uh, he's only here two nights, so I got to treat him right. So here's what I need. I need, I need, for, those who, I, I need for those who can and will uh, sacrifice $100 tonight because I need $3,000 tonight. That's just 30 people giving $100. That's all that is. I got 300 from Pastor Marty Peters. If you don't have cash, I know I, we got a card read over here on the side. Dr. Van Hook, $100. Dr. Greg Hunter, $100. Dr. Ward, $100. $100 from Dr. Hope. Parents, $100. Dr. Keith Henderson, another hundred dollars. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Anybody out there got a hundred? Come on. I know, I know you, I know you got it. 
You're trying to hold on to it and go to the chicken shack with it. I know. Thank you, brother, $100 from this brother right here. I know you're trying to go get some chicken and all that and all that, but I need your help because I need you to go in that sin sack and get this tonight. Amen. Okay, Reverend, I didn't have, okay. That's my member back there. I know she got $100. That's Louise. She got $100. That's an Antioch member right there. She, she got $100. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? All right, Reverend, I didn't have 100 but I got, uh, I got 50 is that Pastor, Pastor, Pastor White Webb? Is that you, man? Beth Eaton Church. Thank you, $100. Look at God. Look at God. You have not cut your ass not. Uh, Jeffrey, man, what's up, man? How you doing, man? That's Jeffrey with $50. Come on. Anybody else got $50? You got $50? my member right there. Chandra Nicole, $50. Anybody else got 50? Anybody else got 50? My wife got 50. That's my wife. I, I didn't know you. I didn't. You can give it to me. Bring it to me. Yeah. Always give your money to me. That's it. Always bring your money. Thank you, baby. Thank you. $50. God bless you. Thank you. Uh, no, give it to me, baby. Give it to me. Give it to me. Always give the money to me. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now look, if you don't have, those of you who are online watching, it's on, it's on the screen. You give through our Givelify. Give through our Givelify. Now look, Reverend, I didn't have, I didn't have 100 and I don't have 50, but I got 20. Would you come? Come on. I know you got $20. $20 is like $2 today. I know you got $20. Come on. I got to have what I got to have. Wait a minute. Is that Porsche over there? Is that Porsche Osborne over there? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Just come on. If you got $20, come on. Some of y'all ain't moved at all. I'm getting nervous. Some of y'all ain't moved. Ain't moving. Y'all like a tree planted by the rivers of water. I shall not be moved. Dr. Morgan, $100? $50. God bless you, man. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Rodney, $100. God bless you. Sister J. Dub. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You have not because you ask not. Is there anybody else? Anybody else? Reverend, I didn't have $100. I didn't have $50. I didn't have 20, but I got 10. Come on, would you bring that? Come on. Dr. Lacey, I don't, I don't know what y'all mean when y'all hold the phones up. Y'all got to tell me what y'all doing. $100? Amen. I, I know what it is. I just need to know what they're giving. Please don't holler out like that. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. R Ronnie Randolph, $100. Thank you so much. We'll be ready to go in just a moment. We'll be ready to go in just a moment. We're in a good time. You still got time to go home and watch the news. Amen. 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 Is anybody else? $10, $5. Come on. I got to have it. Some of y'all ain't gave nothing. How y'all going to come to church with no money? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Here you go, Pastor. Pastor, there you go. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. That's Poodle right there. That's Poodle. That's Poodle. All right. Reverend, you want to bless it for us? That's one of them good prayers. 
you could tell he'd been trained right. See, when you ask to pray over something, pray over that and not everything else. Amen. Amen. Now look. Now look. We had a marvelous time tonight, didn't we? Now I need you to go home and get on the phone and tell somebody to come back tomorrow night. Because this Pastor Haynes last night in town and uh, 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 I already know it's going to be, in his word, it's going to be fire up in him. Amen. It's going to be fire. But now look. The revival doesn't end on Tuesday. Wednesday. It doesn't end on Wednesday. But on Thursday. We kind of making history, y'all. Y'all ain't excited about that, huh? Y'all. Y'all ain't excited about that for the first time. Y'all ain't excited about making history. Y'all just going to be melancholy just like that, huh? Amen. Amen. For the first time in the history of our citywide revival, uh, we're going to have a woman preaching in the revival. And it's going to be the Reverend Dr. Jacqueline Thompson. Now, let me tell you something. When, when I came out, hold up, y'all. When I came out and said we were going to have a woman do the citywide, me and some friends got on the opposite side of the fence. We, we've had all kinds of pushback. Uh, someone even sent a letter to Jackie Thompson's church trying to discourage her from coming. But now let me tell you something. Whenever God is about to do something awesome, you're always going to have some demonic pushback. And let me tell you something, for you brothers, preachers, listening, who ain't at that level yet, let me tell you something, if you don't accept women in ministry, you're going to wind up being left behind, because God got a word in some women, there's some preaching women around here, God got some anointed women of God, and if you don't learn how to accept them and their gift in ministry, you messing up on all fashion. I know how traditionally we've been taught, but if you look at the life of Jesus, he always had a woman somewhere. I, I better stop. I'm going to quit. I ain't, I ain't, I, I, he always had a woman somewhere. Uh, he always had one somewhere. He, he had one to come tell, go tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. He always had a woman somewhere. When he needed his feet clean, he had a woman somewhere. Y'all, I better stop. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit. But, but be, here, be here Wednesday night. Be here tomorrow night. And be here, be here tomorrow night and be here Thursday. Then on Friday night, the Reverend Michael Fisher from Los Angeles, who's one of God's best preachers. So you don't want to miss it. Uh, but here's what I want you to do. Uh, pray for the meeting. Pray for the meeting. I'm going to say again, pray for the meeting because prayer stops the devil in his shoe. I just believe that. Let me say it one more time. Maybe I need to ask y'all over because y'all kind of looking at me kind of. Y'all know prayer still works. No, y'all ain't ready. Here, y'all. Y'all know prayer still works. Amen. Amen. Thank God to all these preachers and pastors who came. Will all the pastors and preachers, male and female, please stand, please. Come on, let's give it up for all these preachers. Pastor Lacey, Dr. Tommy Harris, uh, uh, my brother who's over the, the seminary. God bless you, man. Thank you. God bless you. I see Curtis Robinson, Dr. Ambrose Carroll. God bless you, man. Pastor Greg Hunter, all these preachers, and Dr. Morgan from all the way down there in the country. You down there, way down there, down there. In Modesto, ain't that right? Yeah, we thank God for you. And then my, then my sister, Sister Portia Osborne, you go, girl. Amen, amen. If our hearts and our minds are clear. Oh, look, before I do this, my wife, who is spearheading our Thursday night service, stand up, stand up, Red, so everybody can see who Red is. 
Amen. She's spearheading. She's asking that all women on Thursday night would wear red. Amen. And she's asking each woman, if you would, to bring $50. That ain't no whole bunch of money. Amen. If you don't have it, you got two days to get it from your husband. Amen. Your husband, your boyfriend, your significant other, something. Let me tell you, let me give y'all some game. Let me give y'all some game. Y'all listen to me now. We about to go. If you got a man in your life and you can't get $50 from him, you need to trade him in for a new model. Shall we stand? I know I just messed up. Brothers, don't wait on me outside. All right, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor. Look at him. Look at him. Say, neighbor. God bless you here. See you tomorrow night. Drive safe now. God bless you.